Hola amigos, estamos a punto de subirnos a Kilimanjaro Safari, está tempranito en la mañana que es el mejor momento para ver más animales porque están más activos o temprano en la mañana o tarde en, la, en el anochecer, así que acompáñenme a ver el recorrido, a ver qué animales nos encontramos hoy. Este video es traído a ustedes por Dreams Unlimited Travel. Deje que los expertos de Dreams le ayuden a planificar sin costo extra sus próximas vacaciones a Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Universal Orlando Resort y otros destinos Disney en el mundo. Visítenos en www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com barra inclinada español para una cotización sin compromiso. The stripes on their legs and hind quarters kind of make them look like they might be related to the zebra, but that's not true. They're actually the only known living relative of the giraffe. Now we know this because they have a very similar skull structure, as well as that same long prehensile tongue that giraffes have. That's actually my favorite thing about the okapi, how long its tongue is. Its tongue is so long that it can lick its own eyeball. <laughs> As we come around this bend here on the left, I do see a black rhino there. Actually, two of them. The first one's right here on our left. We're going to stop and take some pictures of it. Now, unfortunately, though, this is an increasingly rare sight. Less than 5,000 black rhino remain in the entire world. They are critically endangered, and those low numbers are due to illegal poaching. Rhino horn is highly valued on the underground trade market because some cultures believe that it may hold a medicinal property. That's completely false though. Rhino horn holds absolutely zero medicinal value. It's made up of keratin, which you may actually recognize as the exact same material that our hair and our fingernails are made of. Nile crocodile have that Nile moniker in their nomenclature because of the Nile River, which is where they were first discovered. 
my friends, we're actually going to head out of the forest completely and over to the savanna, which is a very different ecosystem. The forest is dense and lush with vegetation, but the savanna, not so much. The savanna is more like a superhighway for millions of different migratory animals scattered here, and it's formed by those same animal species. they will do is they will hunt as a pack and they kind of just track their prey until it drops from physical exhaustion. They have this incredible stamina but because of this they do need a very wide range to be able to hunt appropriately so habitat loss has pretty negatively affected them unfortunately. Well, 
We're actually going to dip back into the jungle for just a hot second because we're going to head towards Monkey Point on our way over to Elephant Country. Now, I'm sure those mandrels like to call Monkey Point home, but they're very shy despite living in large social groups. We'll be lucky if we get to see any. But on the right, I do see an elephant. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. That elephant there. But friends, I do want to call your attention over to the left because I do see some mandrels walking around here. And mandrels are the largest monkeys in the world. Males weigh around 100 pounds, females around 30. Now you can see that big, beautiful male there, that coloring on his face and his backside. The females have a little bit of that coloring as well, but not nearly as much or as bright as the males do. see that elephant. Now I'm going to assume that that elephant is a male because he was by himself. After around 15 years or so of living with their mothers, male elephants go off on their own and live solitary or in these kind of small and loose bachelor herds. But seeing him is a pretty good sign that we might see some more up ahead. Although males go off on their own, they never stray too far from those female herds, both for breeding purposes and also because the females know where all the food and water is, so it's just easier to follow them. Outside, it's actually really, really easy to tell the difference between Asian elephants and African elephants. In general, Asian elephants are smaller, hairier, and have a double dome on their heads. They also, only the males have tusks, females do not. Part of the easiest way is just by looking at their ears. In general, the, uh, Asian elephants in general have these really small ears, form an upside down triangle shape, whereas African elephants have those really big ears with that half heart shape, but those ears are really important because it's their way of thermal regulation. There are lots of blood vessels on the backs of their ears that expel heat. What they'll do is they'll actually flap their ears back and forth, which creates a blood to us, uh, a uh, air current over those same blood vessels and cools their overall body temperature down.
cheetah up ahead on our left hand side here. Cheetah are the fastest land animal in the entire world. It can reach speeds of around 60 miles an hour. They go zero to 60 in about three seconds, but they don't keep the speed for long They're sprinters rather than long distance runners. They really only go that top speed for roughly the length of an American football field. And the thing is with cheetah, even though they're very, very fast, they're not very strong. They're pretty small for big cats, actually, and they're built for speed, not power. So a lot of the times, hunting's kind of a problem for them. It takes a lot of energy for a cheetah to attempt to catch its prey. The success rate isn't very good. It's only around the 20% range. So let's say a cheetah is actually lucky and uh, catches its prey, but then it's approached by a larger predator, like a lion, it's going to back off. It knows it can't win that fight, so it's just going to have to try again. And like I said, it's a gamble for cheetah to go out hunting to begin with. So what cheetah have done to help deal with this issue is they have adapted to hunt during the daytime. Most larger predators hunt at night under the cover of darkness, whereas cheetah hunt during the day, which is why, hello, why they have those uh, tear marks on their faces, keeps the glare of the sun out of their eyes. And there's an ostrich just right in front of us, living her best life. <laughs> As a female ostrich, ostrich are what are called sexually dimorphous, which just means that males and females look different. That's really common in birds, actually. But with ostrich, uh, the males have black feathers, females have gray. And hello, a couple of lions up there Ooh, on our left-hand side. Oh, As do, they're doing what they're going to do all day. They are <laughs> quite lazy during the day. That way they have plenty of energy to go out hunting at night. Now, it is the female members of the lion prize that do the hunting. The male's job is to stay back, guard their territory, and protect their cubs. Now, of course, for his hard work, he is rewarded. He does get to eat first. And, of course, we know he's that male because he has that big, fluffy mane. But actually, quick question. Did anyone see the new Lion King movie that came out about a year ago? Yeah. If you did, you probably noticed that Scar looked like super different than he did in the original animated movie. In the original animated movie, Scar had that black mane. But in the new movie, his mane was really thin and patchy. There's a reason for that. A male lion's main thickness and darkness is directly related to his dominance within the prize. The more dominant he is, the darker his mane will be. That's why Scar's mane was thin and patchy with the dominant lion. It actually has to do with the amount of testosterone in their bodies. Now, lions are a really important uh, part of the ecosystem. They are what are known as a keystone species. Very, very important part. And uh, unfortunately, since the original Lion King movie came out, we've lost around 80% of the world's lion population. So it's really important that we help protect them. A couple more options on the left, but also on the right, I do see some white rhino. Oh, a white rhino. I actually get their name from a mistranslation. It comes from the Afrikaans word white, W I T. Now, white means wide, not white. It refers to their wide and broad mouths, not their coloring. They're actually a bit larger than their black rhino cousins. Black rhino are usually around 3,000 pounds, white rhino around 5,000. But they can charge at around 35 miles an hour, and a group of them is called a crash, which makes a lot of sense because their eyesight is absolutely terrible. Uh, it's blurry at best, and they can't really see more than around five feet in front of their faces. So whenever they're running around, they will kind of crash into each other a little bit. So they're pretty funny. Now, the next one Bueno, ahí tuvimos Kilimanjaro. Eh, no olviden que acá cuando, a, cuando salen de la atracción pueden visitar la, el sendero de, explora, de exploración de los gorilas, donde hay muchos animales. Eh, y recuerden que Kilimanjaro siempre es mejor temprano en la mañana a esta hora eh, o tarde en la noche, en el atardecer, si el parque está abierto porque los animales suelen estar más activos durante esas horas, como lo pudimos comprobar, porque la verdad que nos tocó ver muchos animales en esta visita.